Since the beginning of time, just as the ocean has always existed, so too has none. In the heart of Egypt, among the whispers of Nil and the shifting sands of the desert, the myth of creation is being told from one generation to another, explaining the mysteries of the universe. Egyptians believe that Nun is a vast expanse of water, sometimes depicted as an endless ocean. According to their cosmology, everything started from a single point except that point is an infinite swirling mass of chaotic waters. From within these waters a sacred mound called the Benben arose, and it was upon this mound that the god Atum emerged to initiate the symbolic representation of the creative process. That's why he is considered one of the oldest gods in the Egyptian pantheon, embodying the concept of self-creation and the origin of all life. He often merged with Ra into a single deity in later Egyptian theology known Known as Atum Ra. This fusion represents the combination of Atum as the creator god and Ra as the sun god. As a solar deity, he represents the setting sun, symbolizing the cyclical nature of life, death, and rebirth. In this sense, Ra as the sun is seen as the renewing force each day, paralleling Atum's role in creating and sustaining the cosmos. Atum was believed to travel through the underworld during the night, battling the forces of chaos and darkness before bringing victory back every dawn. He is also associated with the concept of Mat, which represents truth, balance, and cosmic order in Egyptian mythology. As the creator deity, Atum played a vital role in establishing and maintaining Ma'at in the universe. He was seen as the ultimate force of harmony and balance, ensuring that the world operated according to divine law. In different stories, a tomb is portrayed as the one who brings forth or gives birth to other gods. According to one popular creation story, Atum spat out Shu, the god of air, and Tefnut, the goddess of moisture, thereby starting the line of gods. Shu's primary function was to create separation and establish boundaries, particularly between his children, the gods of the earth, represented by Geb, and the sky, represented by Nut. Shu's separation of Geb and Nut was instrumental in forming the physical world as it is known. By pushing Nut into the sky and keeping Geb on the earth, Shu effectively created the space in which all terrestrial life exists. This division allowed for the establishment of a habitable environment between the heavens and the earth. As the god of air, Shu's role in separating the earth and sky also symbolized the creation of the atmosphere and the facilitation of weather patterns. His domain included the air and winds, which play a crucial role in weather, climate, and the bringing of life-giving moisture in conjunction with his sister Tefnut, the goddess of moisture. Tefnut is often depicted as a lioness-headed woman, symbolizing her fierce and protective nature as well as her association with the powerful desert storms that bring rain. She holds a significant place in Egyptian religious beliefs and practices, where people often mention her in rituals and prayers for abundance, prosperity, and the well-being of their land. One more thing about ancient Egyptian beliefs, it was common for gods and goddesses to be closely related and to have children among themselves. This practice is known as divine incest and was not considered taboo in the same way as human incest. The gods were seen as transcendent beings who existed outside the normal rules and limitations of human society. That's how siblings Geb and Nut are considered to be the parents of some of the most significant deities in Egyptian mythology, including Osiris, Isis, Seth, and Nephthys. Osiris is best known for the myth of his murder and resurrection. According to the myth, Osiris was murdered by his jealous brother Set, who dismembered his body and scattered the pieces throughout Egypt. Osiris's wife and sister Isis tirelessly searched for his body parts and reassembled them, bringing Osiris back to life long enough to conceive their son, Horus. Osiris then became the ruler of the underworld, where he presided over the judgment of souls and the afterlife. He is typically depicted as a mummified figure wearing the Atef crown, a symbol of kingship. Isis, on the other hand, is renowned for her mastery of magic and her wisdom in matters of healing and divination. She is believed to possess powerful magical abilities which she uses for benevolent purposes such as healing the sick, protecting the vulnerable, and assisting those in need. Isis is also associated with the acquisition of knowledge and wisdom, serving as a patroness of scholars, scribes, and seekers of truth. She is usually portrayed with outstretched wings, wearing a throne-shaped headdress adorned with a solar disk, symbolizing her royal status and connection to the sun. Now let's return to the topic of Set for a moment. He is traditionally depicted as a god with the head of an unknown animal, often interpreted as an aardvark or a mythical creature. 
The malicious deity is depicted as a muscular figure wielding various weapons including the wasp scepter and the ankh, symbolizing his power and authority. Seth's character is marked by ambiguity and contradiction, with some aspects of his nature representing chaos and destruction while others embody strength and resilience. He is often associated with storms, hurricanes, and natural disasters, reflecting his chaotic and unpredictable nature. At the same time, Seth is revered as a protector deity, particularly in desert regions where his fierce and aggressive demeanor is seen as necessary for survival. However, killing his brother set off a series of conflicts between him and Osiris's son, Horus, as they struggled for control over the divine realm. According to myth, Horus sought to avenge his father's death and claim his rightful inheritance. His uncle, feeling entitled to rule, refused to relinquish power and instead usurped the throne for himself. The conflict between Horus and Seth is often depicted as a series of epic battles and contests, both physical and metaphysical, and they clash in various forms. The fight reached its climax in a series of trials and judgments before the Divine Tribunal. Ultimately, Horus emerged victorious, proving his legitimacy as the rightful king of Egypt and the rightful heir to his father's throne. Some stories also mention that Horus had a brother, Anubis, who is the jackal-headed god of mummification and the afterlife. In the same narrative, Isis entrusts Anubis with the task of safeguarding Osiris's body and guiding his soul through the underworld. His steadfast loyalty to his family and his commitment to his duties as the guardian of the dead demonstrate his role as a faithful ally and protector. He also served as a judge in the weighing of the heart ceremony, where the hearts of the deceased were weighed against the feather of Maat to determine their worthiness for eternal life. Anubis was venerated throughout ancient Egypt and remained a popular and influential deity in Egyptian religious beliefs for thousands of years. The last of Geb and Nut's children is Nephthys. She is a lesser-known goddess, typically portrayed as a protective and mourning figure also associated with death and lamentation. The tale goes on, and with time passing and Adam Ra aging, humanity began to conspire against him, plotting his overthrow. Disheartened by the ingratitude and disrespect of the humans he created, Ra decided to punish mankind. He sent his eye, often associated with the goddess Hathor, who could transform into the fierce lioness goddess Sekhmet to deal with the rebellious humans. Enraged, Sekhmet descended to Earth, slaughtering almost everyone. As the destruction continued, Ra had a change of heart. He did not want to exterminate all humans, so he devised a plan to stop her rage and succeeded. However, he chose to withdraw from the world, ascending into the sky forever, and establishing a new order where the gods were more distant from human affairs. What's particularly intriguing in ancient Egypt is how all of these myths often intersect with different deities playing complementary or opposing roles in various narratives. Throughout our conversation, we explored the hierarchy of Egyptian deities, with gods like Ra, Osiris, Isis, and Horus occupying central roles in the pantheon. These major deities were often associated with fundamental aspects of Egyptian life, such as the sun, death, and kingship reflecting the importance of these concepts in ancient Egyptian religion and society. Additionally, we discussed how lesser-known gods like Anubis and Nephthys played vital roles in funerary rituals and the afterlife, highlighting the diversity and complexity of Egyptian mythology. Overall, the richness of this mythology lies not only in its vivid storytelling, but also in its reflection of the cultural, social, and spiritual dynamics of one of the world's most fascinating ancient civilizations.